This is The Lockpicking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is a Lips rim cylinder that I got from YouTube user UrbanHawk. Now, Lips is a fairly old company. I don't know too much about it, but I believe it was started in the Netherlands and acquired by Chubb about 40 years ago. Chubb, of course, was later acquired by the Asa Abloy Group, so I believe that's the company's current owner. I'm not really familiar with any of the company's current products, but I do know that older Lips locks had a reputation of being made to very high tolerances, akin to what you would find in a modern Kaba. This particular lock has a keyway that's fairly paracentric that may be intimidating to some pickers, but I think we can reach the full range of each of the pin's motions with a deep hook in 15 thousandths, something like this number five hook from Peterson. So let's zoom out just a little bit and see what it takes to pick this open. I'm going to be using top of the keyway tension with a 40 thousandths thick pry bar and applying pretty stout tension because that helps negate some of the difficulties that you encounter when you have a lock made to very high tolerances. Okay, nothing on one, nothing on two, Three is binding tightly. Got a click out of him, lifted him up, him up very high. I might have gotten something on four. And click out of five, back to the beginning. Number one. Uh, nothing there. Nothing on two. Click out of three. Nothing on four or five. One may be binding. Let me let off a little bit of tension, give him a little bit more room to move. Now, number two, and we just dropped into a false set. Nothing on three, four, or five. Back to the beginning. Yep, some counter rotation off of number one. Got a click out of him. Nothing on two, three, four is binding now. And we got it open. Okay, let's take this apart and see what's inside. I'm going to make sure I don't lose the picked position of this lock because I do not have a key for it. I'm going to need a clip remover. This is actually not a factory clip. I added this because it did not have a clip on it when it came to me. Okay, let's dump these key pins out first. And it looks like we dropped a couple of ball bearings out from the, the front of the pin stack. Okay, standard pin in slot one, standard in two. Okay, three is not coming out easily. Oh, there we go, three is out. go number four and number five okay let's get the driver pins out now okay number one is a spool as we should have expected two is a spool as well Three is standard, four is standard, and five is standard as well. Let's dump those springs out, and they all appear to be exactly the same. No surprises there. Okay, let me give you a zoom in on all of this. As you can see, all of the key pins are standard. 
for driver pins, we have spools in slots one and two, and standard pins in slots three, four, and five. And you can see all of those driver pins have different lengths. That means they attempted to balance out the pin stacks. Now we can also see a couple of ball bearings up there above slot number one. They dropped out of this tiny little hole that you can see in the front of the pin stack. Most likely that is for pick resistance. As far as the core goes, I don't see anything else unusual about this. Let me give you a look at that keyway. As you can see, a little bit on the paracentric side, but we were able to handle that. So, Urban Hawk, thank you very much for sending this my way. To everyone else, if you do have any questions or comments about it, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.